it's huge. I would like to say that it's still one of the biggest in the industry, yeah. A lot of people, size is just kind of the beginning. How big? Oh, uh, I should know. <laughs> it, it goes by departments, right? It used to be a point where we were way bigger than everybody else. I think people have been expanding their world quite a lot, and it's been really impressive. I mean, there's some amazing games out there. But I think we still have one of the biggest maps ever. It's up there. But we started off thinking about what the gameplay was, who Rico was. Because Rico is, is torn in his heart in terms of seeing this rupture of the land, the same thing happens in the landscape. The trees are gnarled, the rocks are shattered, the towns are old. Uh, so everything is all in a state of disjointedness and a state of ruin. And we wanted to create an environment that was very vertical, that allowed for navigation in a way that got Rico quickly into the air. So we thought about what places in the world have cliffs that are 100 meters tall. Well, what places in the world have crystal clear waters? The south of France and Greece and Spain, Corsica, Malta. The map is really big. Like, I'll probably have to upgrade my computer just to work on the map. And in the beginning, it's just almost like a gray blob. Get some characters and, and landscapes in. I'm taking the, you know, the most amazing parts of of the northern Italy and Corsica and other places. There are three regions in the game. And uh, basically region one is a medley of wealthy and poor towns. It also has the most agriculture. Uh, in region two is more of these military bases and very poor fishing towns, some classical ruins, uh, a lot of rebel bases uh, that are hidden. And in region three, which is my favorite region, is the more forested, more rocky region in the north. It's more uh, it's sort of our Game, Game of Thrones region. It's a huge wall that sort of um, divides the country. One way to add depth to our world is the idea of depth in history. And so what Rico is doing is he's adding yet one more set of ruins to the long list of ruins. And so you see the, the, the ancient past, the near past, the present, and what's the future. Just Cause is about changing regime. And so how to make a regime that feels believable in the Mediterranean in this contemporary day and age. The classic tropes of regime versus the, the, the will of the people is through graffiti and descent, is through uh, architecture, is through color. It's not gang graffiti, it's, it's a graffiti by people who don't know graffiti. It's something that's very sincere and very uh, from the heart by the people. We're looking for a place that, a place that's lost hope. A lot of people have been run down by Di Ravello. You, you could see it in like the, the environments for the villages, like the, it's just like completely destroyed, but it, you still have to have that beauty at the same time, like having that brutalism versus like this Renaissance kind of appearance. In the militarized zones, we have more freedom of the classic Just, just Cause gameplay. Whereas in the civilian settlements, we want to have, we want to keep it it was somewhat different and really emphasized on the people living there. At the core of Just Cause is verticality. Vertical combat and vertical traversal. Having the world being the Mediterranean allow for an architecture and a topology which really, really goes hand in hand with verticality. Imagine sheer cliffs, high mountains, big elevation differences. One of our mottos is if you can see it, you can go there. One of the um, unique features of the Just Cause series is the draw distance and the ability to actually see the entire world. And there's no way, better way to present that than from above, obviously. So we want Rika to be airborne as much as possible, either from free falling or parachuting or in an airplane or whatever. There is no game where we will feel as comfortable by traversing the skies and fighting while you are in air as in Just Cause. We needed a world that we could sculpt this required an entirely new invention of technology to recreate entirely how we were going to do worlds. We have the best job in the world, essentially, mm -hmm. making video games. I like JC Ford's huge openness as well. I just like to steal a helicopter and go, go, go crazy. We have taken inspiration from the, some of the mods that were produced for Just Cause 2 for some of the more uh, crazy ideas that we've put into Just Cause 3. The modding community took, and it's a complex piece of code, so the fact that people were able to get in there and do what they've been able to do is, is really cool. I mean, watching a lot of the mods, I mean, the famous ones, the Superman mods, the Infinite Grapple mods, the, you know, the multiplayer guys coming out and trying to figure out how to run the game on a server. All that's an incredible thing to do is modding. And some of these guys worked on mods for years. 
to get them to work. And that sort of dedication to a game, you have a responsibility to put out a game that allows them to do it again. And so I kind of can't wait to see what people do now that we've expanded the tool set so much. I want to make a, a Just Cause with a long tail, as long, if not longer, than the one that Just Cause 2 had. I want to make a Just Cause that not only player will enjoy playing, but player will enjoy modifying and creating new stuff on top of it.